the selection that is made by the judges. As I've indicated in my letter to Mr. Stevens, and I think uh, I think that uh, Ms. Monahan uh, sent that to you all, Judge Altman uh, and Judge Seary um, and I have approved the contract. The contracts and we're asking the board ratify them. Mr. Warren uh, has also uh, looked over them. Mr. Warren met with Judge Altman and I last week and discussed this and uh, reviewed the terms. Um, I have with me Mr. Trina Hodges, who's the regional director for Providence Community Corrections. And if the board has any questions, Ms. Hodges and I will be happy to try to answer them. Any questions from the board? This is just about the change in the name on the contract. Yes, sir. That's all it is. Yes, sir. How many do we have on the contract? Proposal by Mr. Grady and Derek Sackler. Yes, Second by Mr. Neesman. Is there any more discussion on this? Do we have one? Mr. Okay. Chair, Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. can I just say something? Uh, there's been a lot of articles written in the paper, and I'm sure Judge Mitchell and this lady here are both familiar with them, about the abuse of uh, private probation all over the country. And it's been very prevalent in certain parts of the state, uh, absolutely illegal, some of the things that's been done. And so I'm, I'm sure Mr. Mitchell's looked over all those things that uh, Judge Mitchell has, uh, are you satisfied that we're in compliance with the intent of the law? Yes, yeah, so what the sheriff's talking about is, is there's a company called Sentinel who, uh, matter of fact, they, they have a contract with the state court in Lowndes County, and they uh, continue to collect supervision fees on cases that have expired and did some other things, which quite honestly, I don't really blame Sentinel, I blame the judges in Richmond and Columbia County, but anyway, uh, Sentinel got Richmond and Columbia County sued, and it was a big, big class action lawsuit, which the Supreme Court of Georgia has just ruled on and allowed the uh, lawsuits to go forward. And they may have to turn back in Columbia County, they may have to turn back some supervision fees to defendants. And the reason is because the Chief Superior Court judge signed a contract that was never ratified by the Board of Commissioners. So we don't want to be in that position. But, but, but the main problem, but, but I don't put people in jail just for owing money unless they have the ability to pay and they're willfully refusing to, which is the law. So. Ms. Hodge. Yes, sir. Is your, your office, is it located in, uh, in uh, Bainbridge also? I had an office located in Bainbridge. We also do probation for the Cater County State Court there. But the Thomasville office is located here. Being that I am the regional director, I supervise various offices from Thomasville up to the Cordial, Georgia area. Um, but one of the unique things that we do here in Thomasville is we convert, when there's someone who cannot pay their fines and fees, and then Judge Mitchell allows that person to do, let's say, community service, we stop, as a company, we stop charging that person also supervision fees. So if the county, per se, is not receiving any money it's because the individual is doing community service, our company is not receiving any money also. So we do have that agreement. We work very well with Judge Mitchell, um, letting him know who can pay and who cannot pay. Um, but we, uh, we, do, we, do, we do not do some of the things um, or any of the things that Sigmund did. Um, we, we just do not believe in doing those things. As I said, we, we are about the probation, we are about the rehabilitation, and we are about helping them. So if we find someone, like I said, that can't pay, has no means of paying, we stop, we start charging that person also. You said when you low in the larger and get smaller. As far as probation? Right. We currently have three full-time employees here in the office. And as far as the caseload, um, it's pretty much the same study, but by law, um, we are required to have only so many probationers per office. And so if it goes over a particular member, and that member is 200 per office, we are required to have another staff member on board. But I am here in the Thomasville office almost every single day, also working in Facebook. I have a question. Um, if I'm a private company and want these individuals to work for me, and they work, then can they do that and pay the money to, to the courts? Is that how it works? As far as community service? Community 
them, sir. It I, has to be done with a nonprofit organization. Um, it can't be done with a private company. Um, we, you know, that's something that we can always talk with Judge Mitchell regarding, and if he would approve something like that, then we are able to do that. But as of right now, the community service has to be done with a nonprofit agency. And we have um, communicated with agencies here in Thomas County. We had a listing, and we're constantly visiting those sites to find out what needs they have and assigning probationers to those various sites to, to assist them. Well, to me, there's a lot of work out there for those that can work for the private sector. They can get those fine paid. Yes, sir. Well, I mean, the problem with sending sending somebody to a, to a, a private for, to a for-profit corporation is obvious. You know, you're you're you know you're you know you're you're sending somebody into a sentence of a court that the, where they're mandated to go to go work, and you're sending them to a for-profit operation, <coughs> um, uh, and you're you know you're playing favorites among companies. You know, so it really needs to be a, it really needs to be non-profit. For it to be service to the entire community, which is what it's supposed to be. Then, uh, <laughs> uh, the question that was already mentioned on Ms. Hargis, 